So, friends, we are talking about complaint offshore platforms. We said that compliancy refers to flexibility. We also said by design, the platform need not remain flexible in all degrees of freedom. So, compliancy induces flexibility and platform resists loads by displacement and not by strength. Having said this, there are varieties of complaint platforms which are commissioned from shallow water, deep water and ultra deep waters. So, what would be the essential source of strength of these platforms? These platforms very strongly rely on the restoring buoyancy force. This is required to maintain stability and to ensure recentering capability. Now, one may ask me a question why recentering capability is required in complaint structures? The answer is very interesting. Recentering is required because the system is permitted to undergo large displacements. So, we must check these displacements to be within the permissible limits. More interestingly, these platforms avoid resonance or I should say resonating response by operating at a frequency well below the wave frequency. On the other hand, let us say the typical wave periods at which offshore platforms are commissioned for different sea states or typically let us say 6 meter 6 seconds, 8 meter 8 seconds, 8 meter 10 seconds, 10 meter 10 seconds, 12 meter 10 seconds, 12 meter 15 seconds and 15 meter 15 seconds. These are some set of combination of wave periods and wave heights which are operable in different sea states where offshore platforms are generally commissioned. So, I must select a system whose natural period should not lie in the band of 6 seconds to 15 seconds, so that I can avoid a near resonating response. So, typically complaint structures have two set of periods. One is for the flexible degrees, namely surge, sway and yaw. Other is stiff degrees namely roll, pitch and heave. So, the typical periods of surge, sway and yaw vary anywhere from 60 seconds to as high as 120 seconds which is much beyond the bandwidth. The typical periods of stiff degrees anywhere vary from 2 seconds to 5 seconds which are also beyond the bandwidth of operational waves. So, the platform by design does not resonate. That is the first advantage we have. The second advantage in response behavior is these platforms disperse loads by displacement 
or rigid body motion and not by strength. So, obviously friends to be very specific in terms of computer methods of structural analysis complaint platforms we need not bother about the axial force, bending moment, shear force etcetera, but we should bother about the displacements in x, y and z direction. We are going to bother about the displacement control, but not the strength or the stress control design at all. So, this is considered as one of the great advantage, this is one of the important shift in design philosophy of offshore platforms. Okay. So, that is very important to realize at this stage. So, therefore, these structures are highly suitable for deep waters. So, how are they position restrained is an issue. This is still an issue which varies with different types of complaint platforms which we will now discuss. Therefore, the structural form of complaint platforms in general are different from fixed type within complaint platforms there are different geometries which all have the same design philosophy but variation in geometric forms which you will now see a typical complaint platform is shown in the figure you can see the top side platform and the platform is rested on the seabed neither be sulfate nor be piles, but a lattice type truss type design tower. So, the platform can rest on the seabed by what we call as towers. Towers are essentially wave transparent, but obviously when towers are supporting the deck or the hull towers need to extend for the entire water depth. For example, you see here towers are extending for the entire depth. Therefore, any tower supported system cannot be useful for increased water depth because the tower has to go for the entire water depth. So, we must think of a complaint platform which should not be supported by the tower by some other mechanism. Before we discuss that, let us take a simple example of a complaint platform which is a guide tower platform. The one what you see here is a guide tower platform which is a complaint platform, complaint type platform which is useful for both drilling and exploration activities they can operate in water depths anywhere from 160 meter to as deep as 600 meter. The top deck is supported by a steel truss type tower as you see in the figure, but the foundation is resting on the spud can which is similar to that of a jack up rig. So, simple foundation supported by tower. Now, to enable restoration they are connected by guy wires. We will be connecting the platform 
this point where the guy wire connects the tower is called the fairly this point where the guide tower connects the seabed is called the touchdown point lot of counterweights are added at the touchdown points these are counterweights to hold down the guy wire so this is the guy wire that's why this platform is called guide tower so interestingly the platform enables a pendulum motion which is put can at the bottom which is more or less hinged boundary condition which takes no moment but offers resistance to both horizontal and vertical but no moment so the system actually oscillates when it oscillates to the left the guy wires try to pull this back when it oscillates to the right these guy wires try to pull it back so this operation is what we call as recentering capability so the platform oscillates about the spot can point and that movement that compliancy that displacement actually resists the loads encountering this platform so loads are resisted by movement which we say compliancy this compliancy induces flexibility and the platform is not a stiff or a rigid type the second type of platform which is compliant platform is articulated towers so articulated towers briefly called as at a typical articulated tower looks like this unlike guide towers articulated towers has a central core or a central column which is attached with the buoyancy chambers and ballast chambers which is connected to the seabed using universal joint so the connection the tower is connected to the seabed using universal joint universal joint is a joint which is similar to that of a ball joint which offers rotation but restrains lateral and vertical motion so theta at the joint is practically desired to be infinity but delta and del at the joint practically is zero that's the ideology of this joint so this now acts as an inverted pendulum because this is the point where the pendulum is pivoted and the platform will oscillate about this so again when load is encountered platform oscillates 
that causes compliancy because it is displaced. The degree of freedom here displacement is rotation about the base. So, this implies a fact that moment about the base is 0. So, this has an advantage this initiates a simple foundation. So, the foundation is not complex it is very simple recentering of the platform is ensured by I should say inverted pendulum action in addition to that when you look at this platform the buoyancy chamber and the ballast chamber which are filled with water or oil also offers variable buoyancy effect which also adds to the restoration. This kind of platform has one important observation. The observation is the platform will undergo rotation continuously which may cause a fatigue failure at the universal joint. So, that is one in important issue as far as these towers are concerned. So, what is the advantage of having compliancy? 